Welcome back. Uh, lots of people have asked about iOS XR training. So in this series of training, we're going to go through iOS XR. So basically, we're going to start from introduction to Cisco iOS XR, including the features and functions of Cisco iOS XR software operating system. We're going to then go through the fundamental concepts of which the operating system is based and then basic operations and followed by that system administration and troubleshooting. So my plan is to go through a series of lessons. I think they're going to be about five to six lessons, um, half an hour each. And that will uh, gi give you understanding of the major aspects of operating systems, including the architecture, high availability components, scalability features, configuration basics, basic software operations and uh, config overviews. And later in the series, we'll cover how to configure routing protocols, uh, monitor the processes and uh, use the various different logs, uh, messages and core dumps, etc. Let's take a look at some of the components of iOS XR. In this lesson, we're going to go through um, various components of iOS XR and we're going to start with the scalability, how scalable the iOS is. Next, we're going to take a look at the uh, distributed forwarding architecture of iOS XR and then the reliability and resiliency of the iOS and then how it separates the services um, so, and flexibility. And then next, we're going to take a look at uh, the how modular the iOS is in terms of uh, various components and finally the config structure, which is hierarchical compared to iOS and iOS XE. So these are the next uh, few topics we're going to take a look at. Let's take a look at further into the iOS XR. iOS XR is a distributed uh, modular OS, means that uh, processes run in their own memory space and therefore it's more scalable. And for example, if you're running um, OSPF and BGP, they run in their separate memory space and that allows OS to scale better. It is a micro kernel based uh, OS means that the minimum amount of sof software that can be used for the mechanism to, to implement the OS. Basically a micro kernel um, operating system functionalities include uh, the, the doing memory management and task scheduling and, and con context switching, for example, and uh, inter-process communication. Uh, the microkernel that is used in uh, the iOS XR is a uh, QNX um, operating system uh, from uh, QNX, which is a sort of a Unix type of OS that is famous for a very lightweight, building very lightweight uh, OSs. So, and the Cisco ISR uses uh, QNX for that. And hence, as I said before, the kernel is uh, very lightweight and uh, doesn't include uh, the services such as we traditionally used to operating systems in, in the old days where the, the device drivers, file systems and, and other things like network stack. Let's take a look at further into the um, architecture of iOS XR. As discussed before, all the processes outside the microkernel are individually restartable. If you remember from the Cisco iOS and uh, some of the other um, OS uh, legacy OSs, and the uh, there's, there was dependencies between the processes. For example, if the the routing process crashed, it would take down with it all the uh, all the elements of routing. Hence, the the routing information base and FIB was also affected. In XR, because it's modular, for example, if we let's say that if um, a RIB process restarts, so because it's a separate uh, process and uh, because the each individual protocol runs in its own memory space and rib is based um, is built out of the out of the um, all the protocols so hence in in in, in case of crash uh, the rib table will rebuild and there, there's no traffic disruption if um, a rib process is restarted so that's uh, one of the main benefits of uh, the modular uh, OSs uh, like we have recent in recent years, including iOS XR. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, the platforms that uh, iOS XR uh, supports. Uh, so 
gone at the days of uh, CRS and uh, we have now very powerful uh, small form factor products from Cisco likes of uh, NCS series and um, and also the uh, the inf infamous um, ASR 9000 so so first of all uh, we're going to just uh, briefly look at the at the summary and uh, in in uh, next slides we're going to take a look at more details into the products so in NCS we have 5500 and um, 500 series and then we have the 8000 series that these are products run XR7 so we're going to uh, briefly take a look at uh, XR7 later on and of course ASR 9000s they are the part of any ISPs in, in ISP core or edge depending on the size of the ISP in the industry wherever Cisco products are used in service provider environments. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the details of uh, iOS XR routers, uh, the product range that is supported in um, NCS 5500 series. So first of all we've got NCS 5501 and it comes in two models really and both one one u and same backplane similar sort of spec uh, an se and uh, and a normal version so the both uh, the difference uh, being is that uh, one of them has got slightly powerful processor um, with 5501 we've got the intel uh, intel 6 core and um, with um, uh, se it's an 8 core processor the rest of the spec is same. It's uh, kind of geared for uh, aggregation and or pre-aggregation market, and it's a one 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 um, one U router. Fifty five hundred two is a is a two U variation of the same product. Similarly, it's for the aggregation layer, and the capacity goes up of the backplanes to eight point four point um, eight um, TB, and um, memory um, is same and it has a 12 core um, processor and similarly with SE we've got um, a slightly improved version of ASIC and uh, we have uh, two two models of that and then next is uh, 5508 that's a modular chassis um, so means that it takes up to um, eight line cards uh, including out of them two RPs um, and six uh, switch fabric cards. So we've got eight power supplies, three fan trays. So it's a, it's a quite a modular product in the NCS range that uh, will take uh, 13 uh, rack space a unit of your uh, space. And the last one is uh, 5516, means that it's a 16 line card. So it supports up to 16 line cards in the chassis. And um, it, it will take um, 21 rack units um, of um, your space. Uh, the capacity in terms of the max capacity, the 5508 has 28.8 uh, TB and um, 5516 has a 57.6 terabit per second max uh, capacity. So let's quickly take a look at uh, 8000 and 8800 series. Um, Eight um, eighty two hundred series are sort of um, one U uh, small routers, very powerful, leveraging hundred gigabits uh, for uh, small exchanges and CDN um, networks where there's a constraint for uh, space, and the ideal for that. But eighty hundred eighty eight hundred series is sort of uh, a different beast with a capacity of two hundred and sixty terabits per second. They're multi um, modular and it takes multiple different cards and a huge number of ports uh, supporting um, 400 gigabits uh, uh, Ethernet modules and 100 gig Ethernet modules uh, in, in the horizontal configuration. So they are sort of the, um, the backbone of um, sort of CDN networks where you need a lot of um, bandwidth and uh, port density. So ideal product for that running iOS XR7. So we're going to look a little bit more details about the various um, models within the um, 800 and 8800 series. So let's just review some of them to understand um, power of iOS XR that we're going to take a look later on in our uh, in our training. So first of all, we're looking at uh, uh, the module type that support it. So basically. The QSFP56 is uh, a double density um, optical transceiver that supports up to 400 gigabit Ethernet applications and QSFP2000 
128 and supports up to 100 gig and data rate and that basically integrates four uh, transmit and four receive channels uh, so means that uh, line can carry up to 28 gig data and data on each so therefore it's uh, 100 gig supported on that now as we move on to the um, chassis you see as uh, we get to 8202 it's a 2u um, um, chassis and supporting more modules and then as soon as we look at the um, 8800 series they are modular the difference is between fixed and modular and as the back modular chassis the back plane capacity goes up and a huge number of um, 100 gig e ports uh, 48 of them and then you have the uh, uh, qs sfp 56 um, ports available and it's going to take uh, 16 rack units of your space and with the eight horizontal slots in the in the in the chassis and finally in the series is 8812 again modular with a bit more um, capacity and and and, and more uh, leverage for the line cards again the sfp types are supported uh, same this they are geared for the huge number of bandwidth push in and out of the chassis uh, instead of more uh, features they are more bandwidth driven and this uh, router is going to take uh, uh, use 12 slots so you can have 12 cards of various types in it and it's going to take uh, 21 um, rack unit in our rack space finally this Cisco 9000 series, the Cisco flagship for the ISV products. Uh, 9000 series have been around uh, with one of the very first to go on Cisco ISXR and they've been around for um, for a long time and if you work in ISP you would see them in uh, in one or the other capacity either in access aggregation or, or, or the core depending on the um, size and magnitude of the uh, ISP. So we're going to go through some of the products of uh, Cisco 9000. So we see that we have 9001 9, and uh, NV sort of basic uh, 1 and 2U chassis just uh, giving a lot of port density and leverage with the iOS XR features uh, and along with 9000 series and benefits. Uh, so supporting that the basically as we go along the uh, 9000 series portfolio we'll see that it comes in variety of chassis as you know loaded with the line card up to 4000 gig ethernet uh, is supporting various different type of optics uh, ip and, and layers and different forwarding and uh, backplane capabilities uh, the new ios xr series also supports all the modern uh, network um, uh, features like the automation uh, api um, and etc EVPN uh, and, and, and they sort of uh, refined for uh, the new type of optics uh, supporting uh, 100 and 400 gig and uh, very resilient uh, the large chassis uh, let's look at uh, 9010 uh, this is one of the one of the very legacy um, sort of uh, chassis been around in ISP cores and, and aggregation layers and we see it's a it's vertical configuration in terms of cards uh, as we go um, in, in a larger chassis in Cisco and Juniper we see that the card config is vertical that has a, diff a different uh, benefits and um, so we'll go in a different video of different chassis designs but for, for the purpose of this video we're gonna stick with the basic features supported by the routers uh, that support iOS XR similarly 9006 and um, we have uh, then finally um, the large vertical uh, config chassis of um, uh, 9000 series they're leveraging ios xr part of uh, most isps um, one or the other layer as i said uh, depending on the size um, you can use them as a core or aggregation similarly uh, 9900 series which are the final uh, uh, the more latest versions of 9000 series the if you look at 9910 it has the higher uh, backplane capacity with supporting 8 card and 2 RSPs and 5 fabric cards uh, similarly the final two chassis that are supported uh, as as we as we go up in the in the in the range we looking at uh, more supported cards uh, uh, backplane capacity and and etc and finally the beast of uh, ASR 9922 um, the ultimate uh, will take the whole uh, one whole rack which is 44 rack units with a huge capacity and uh, and a big variety for the cards route processors and fabric cards 
So this is just sort of a quick look at uh, the uh, Cisco range that supports iOS XR. As we go through the series, we'll look at uh, various functions of XR. And finally, just before we start our lab lessons for the iOS XR, we're just going to quickly recap the iOS XR command prompt and, and CLI structure. Although we're going to go more details in the actual practice lessons, we're just going to have a look at some of the basics of the um, CLI of iOS XR. The RP means a route processor. Uh, next slash zero is uh, zero is for single rack chassis, depending on how many chassis you have. We're going to be using XRV, so it's always going to be zero. The next one is a route switch processor and you have if you have two RSPs in a chassis then the RSP1 is going to be 0 and RSP2 is going to be 1. Next one is CPU uh, so that depending on the platform as I said we in XRV in our example is going to be always 0. And finally the host name um, and in our case is R1 and that, that's uh, the host name of the chassis. I look forward to see you in our next lessons where we're going to start the practical lessons for Cisco iOS XR in series of videos. If you like the video, please hit the subscribe button and leave your comments. Thank you.